roll up, roll up, roll up. Come and see all the abnormalities and weird wonders in Oddie's cabinet of curiosities. Watch the following trailers and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> Connoisseurs of vile and maggoty things, this documentation is for you. It's about strange, cold, slimy creatures going into cemeteries and digging up dead, strange, cold, slimy creatures who, in turn, go and haunt and suck the blood from the very good people of London. Not for the faint-hearted. My dear friends, it's a haunted weekend here on Patreon. We are investigating the historic Highgate Cemetery in London, which is very haunted. We take a look at all the sightings over the years, plus the history of the cemetery, and also discuss the famous vampire case of the late 60s and 70s, which resulted in a media frenzy at the time. If you like cemeteries and hauntings, then this video is for you. Remember, my friends, if you wish to support me, Patreon is the place to be. $3 opens 6 historical features that are not on YouTube, $5 opens 11, and $8 opens 17 full historical presentations that are not on YouTube. $20 devoted pledge. That opens all of them. I mean, that is value for money. You can't beat it. So I do hope you can join myself and my community at Patreon as we hold hands walking through this vast necropolis. Don't be scared, Oddie is with you. See you there. Take care, my friends. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Connoisseurs of vile and carnivorous things, this presentation is for you. It's about a young Swiss lady who travels to the United States of America to find her fortune. Instead, she ends up in a dump and gets eaten by a total nutter who makes her into a dandy soup and feeds her to the hobos. Not for vegetarians. Even to the junkies, pushers and homeless who gave Tompkins Square Park its unique ambience in the 1980s, Daniel Rakovitz was a scary character. He was often seen with a rooster perched on his shoulder, a copy of Hitler's Mein Kampf in his hand, and bore a disturbing resemblance to Charles Manson. 
It was known locally that he was regularly sacrificing small animals. In his frequent ravings, he insisted that he was Christ or the Antichrist, and sometimes just the god of marijuana. Whatever it was, most felt that this bearded man with the crazed glint in his eyes was dangerous. On September the 13th, police went into the Brooklyn restaurant where Rakovitz was working and arrested him. Rakovitz eventually led police to the Port Authority bus terminal storage lockers, where he had stored Monica's skull and other bones inside a bucket of kitty litter. He admitted dissecting her in a bathtub and making soup out of her brains. He tasted it, liked it, and thereafter referred to himself as a cannibal. In a later interview, he said, I am the new lord, and I will take leadership of the satanic cultists to make sure they do everything that has to be done to destroy all those people who disagree with my church. And I'm going to be the youngest person elected to the U.S. presidency. Connoisseurs of arty, farty history, this presentation is for you. For all those learned folks who like a bit of art in their life. Don't miss this one. It's about a beautiful woman who looks nothing like me. Who has an amazing life, full of victory and success makes a whole lot of money and even misses getting her head chopped off by the guillotine. Not the sort of ending I enjoy. And not the sort of people I'd clink a glass with down at the old root pub. My rating for this presentation? Soppy art with heart. 18th century adventurer with a hot looking bird. My dear friends, in this episode, we look at the amazing life of a French painter whose genius elevated her to incredible success and ultimately the hateful envy of her male counterparts. At 15, she was painting the aristocracy. In her 20s, she was the favored painter of Marie Antoinette, and by her 30s, she was fleeing the French Revolution. Her ability to depict her subjects in a flattering, elegant style made her one of the most popular portraitists in France. After the French Revolution, Elizabeth worked abroad for 12 years, she finally returned to Paris after her safety was guaranteed and continued to enjoy a degree of fame and success that was very rare for a female artist. Join me on Patreon where we explore every twist and turn of her long and fruitful life. Connoisseurs of crazy French chicks and all things Parisian, this presentation is for you. Stories set in the 19th century about a girl from a poor background who sets herself up as a countess, lures many men into her web, bleeds them dry and gets a new one. She actually hates men. It's all very confusing, don't ask me. She does a stint in an insane asylum, gets out and bags herself a nice rich young gent who has no idea what's in store for him. My rating for this? Homicidal maniac in a nice petticoat. Not for the romantic at heart.
Jean Breco was born into poverty and neglect. From a young age, a local baroness took pity on her and took her into her home to provide a better life and education for her. Once she reached a certain age, her parents wanted her back so they could send her out on the streets to earn a living by selling gingerbread. Years later, Jean never forgot the luxury life she had experienced and was determined never to taste poverty again. After trying her hand at several professions, she found the one most suited to her in order to gain rapid wealth, prostitution. Jean was attractive and sensual, but she lacked compassion, although she could feign it well. Finally, she found a young man of wealth and was determined to keep him at all costs. Her unwitting beau had no idea what she had planned for him. This video is exclusive to my Patreon supporters, whose patronage is crucial to my continuing research and work bringing these videos to you. Connoisseurs of bygone eras, antiques and mad people. This presentation is for you. It's about a mad old thing who drops down in the street later to die and then they find at his gaff a whole load of antique nudie pictures. Except they're not just any old nudie pictures, he took them himself. Turns out, as a young bloke, he spent all his hard-earned money on the nice girls in Storyville, New Orleans. They returned the favour by posing in their birthday suit for him. Anyhow, years later, they're now hanging in the finest galleries in the world. You can't make this up, can you? Where did I go wrong? Hacksaw's rating... Vintage porn, but with an actual storyline. Something for the whole family. Well, perhaps not. EJ was a photographer, but not just any photographer. He documented the street workers in New Orleans in the early 1900s. These were no formal portraits, nor was it a government contract to record their identities. He did this in his own time and at his own expense, and the ladies were allowed to express themselves in any way they desired. He treated them with respect, and they in turn allowed him to capture their individuality on glass plates. The result of his work lay hidden in dusty boxes for decades, until they were discovered in an antique store in the 1960s. What would have been considered pornography when E.J. created them was suddenly a fascinating gallery of the happiness, sadness and colour of souls long gone. They now hang in the finest art galleries and give us a unique glimpse into a world where E.J., just like Toulouse-Lautrec, felt comfortable. Please note that in this presentation I have made no attempt to cover up the nudity because it is an integral part of the story. Because of this, YouTube may delete this when I post it there in two years' time. I am happy to say that Patreon is very tolerant of the natural human form. Join us there, my friend, when we take a glimpse at this fascinating character and the women who allowed him into their lives.
connoisseurs of creepy old English things. And don't look at me, you. Well, where was I? Yeah, creepy old English things. Perfect romantic setting. Loads of ale and opium. Well, this story is for you. It's about these very gifted children living in a creepy old parsonage on the windswept moors. Anyway, the boy had to compete with the girls. Well, competing with his sisters proved to be a challenge, so he went down the pub instead and turned into a raving alcoholic. Anyway, I won't give away too much but I bet I could drink him under the table. Hacksaw's rating. English romanticism with loads of booze. A pleasant watch on the Sunday afternoon. Something for geniuses and alcoholics alike. As we peer through the mists, we hear the chattering of the Bronte children as they work on their miniature books. In the blink of an eye, years slide by. And now we see Emily sitting at the window, gazing out over the windswept moors, dreaming up her characters for Wuthering Heights. But our gaze is pulled towards their brother, Branwell. Poor Branwell, a genius without self-discipline. Despite his early endeavours, the yawning abyss looms constantly before him as he is inextricably pulled towards it. It is Branwell we must concentrate upon. We cannot tear our gaze away. The fascination of watching someone's fate play out. Yours faithfully, Oddie Bow, in the year of our Lord, 2023. Join us on Patreon, my friends, for this account of one of the less known Bronte siblings. Plus, I show you some more treasures, in inverted commas, from the Obsolete Oddity Collection and even a blooper to wipe the sadness away at the end. Take care, my friends, and have a great weekend. Those stout of heart, those intrepid enough to enter Oddie's carnival of dreams. You will not be disappointed. All for a meager admission price. You will be astounded, delighted. Your pink bits will be tickled, I can assure you. Not only do you get to enjoy all the fun of the fair, but wonderful dreams will caress you during the dark hours. Do not hesitate. Join Oddy. You know it makes sense. You know it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Now it.